let's uh, bring the conversation back to um, uh, well, the the big story uh, and tragic story that is happening uh, over in the east of Europe at the moment. There's no doubt the news is a very tough watch at the moment when we see pictures of what has been going on in Ukraine and can't begin to imagine um, the cities in particular, Mariupol, has been cut off uh, what is happening there. Um, Can you imagine what it must be like to be there on the ground and seeing this devastation happen? Well, my next guest can do just that for us. Tony Anthony is from Lee and has just got home, having spent the last 20 days working in Ukraine on behalf of a charity. And he joins me now to tell me his story. Hi to you, Tony. Hi, good morning, Ben. Yeah, thanks for coming on um, to talk about this. Uh, How did you end up in Ukraine first off? Um, Our organisation is called the Great Commission Society. It's a Christian charity registered in the UK. And we've been working for many years in Ukraine and also the bordering countries. And so when this whole thing escalated, um, the beginning of the invasion, we had people on the grounds that were responding straight away before anybody else was able to. Um, So, for example, there were a cluster of organisations working with ex-offenders, working with homeless people, doing work in schools and sports. And they basically converted their organisations overnight to responding to refugees. When the war broke out, Tony, what what happened to ensure that you were... Oh, you, you went to help out there as well. Was Did you put your hand up? Were you asked? what? How did that transpire? Well, um, I'm serving as the CEO of the organisation, um, so UK-based uh, in Leonsi. And, um, and so I was doing a lot of coordinating from a distance. Um, and it got to the point where uh, we were starting to understand the, 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 the best ways to respond to this, this crisis. Um, And so um, there are sort of like three sections of what we're trying to do. We're responding to people at the borders coming through in terribly long queues, taking convoys of supplies, humanitarian supplies into Ukraine, into nearby cities. And then their challenge was to take um, uh, nutritional food supplies to the danger zones such as Kiev and so on. And so it got to the point where I needed to be on the ground. We've got teams based in, we have 300 uh, missionaries working from Poland, Hungary, Slovakia, Romania and Moldova and in Ukraine. Um, And uh, our network that we built over many, many years has just just adapted to this problem. And so it got to the point where I needed to be with the team on the ground. We've had my colleagues from uh, GCS to United States who uh, are Ukrainians, but but they're living in, in America. So the fantastic thing is we needed translators. So they were able to come over. We've had s- several waves of teams join us right now. Today, um, we've got a team, uh, our team from Seattle, and um, they are in um, buying food in a wholesale, uh, like a type of Costco equivalent, um, trying to fill up a 20-ton lorry, which tomorrow night, or actually this could well be Saturday morning in the early hours, we will be driving through to... Um, either near to Mariupol, or or if things are not safe enough, then we'll go on to Kiev again. Talk me through the decision, because uh, you've got a family as well, Tony, about about deciding t- to run towards the conflict. Um, I, I, my, my wife, her name's Sarah, she's a school teacher, and I have two sons, and of course they are terribly worried for me, I'm worried for them. Um, and to think that Pete families in, in Ukraine right now are in a far worse position and they cannot do anything. And that's what compels us. People's lives are in je- a danger right now. And as we've been working on the borders, um, just seeing people's eyes, just seeing, um, you know, husbands take their wives and children, um, you know, queuing up for hours, making most of every minute to drop them off. And then any men that are between the ages of 18 and 60 need to go back. They can't they're not allowed to leave because they got to obviously, you know, fend for the, the nation. Um, and, uh, you know, we're seeing people heartbroken. And so, um Really, uh, it's not thinking about ourselves. It's thinking about these people. These are such brave people. Um, we came across one mother um, at the uh, border. It's called Siret on the Romania-Ukraine border. Um, and there was an eight-hour queue there. And by the way, that's last week when it was snowing. 
and you know these people were freezing and we were throwing blankets over and uh, giving them cups of tea and and just trying to uh you know um sort of offer uh, just uh, some 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 care and there was a mother sitting by the actual border um uh, and she was not allowed to go through because she didn't have um uh she only had electronic um paperwork not printed so they didn't let her through she was pregnant with small children and so you know our team were able to actually just take her through um you know it's it's crazy how things happen you know literally we our team uh, there's a guy uh, i think his name's daniel he was he got a whole box of sandwiches he's giving sandwiches to the to the guards uh, on the ukraine border the romanian border and so they're very happy with us they know what we're trying to do and we're able to take people like this lady all the way through but when we're going to kiev we're taking food to people that are trapped and they're being the, the attack is obviously not just missiles and bombs but being starved um out or i mean it's it seems like it's all got all the hallmarks of genocide to me um but um you know we're, we're trying we're, when we go there with a vehicle um we we fill up a 20 ton lorry full of this uh, you know really uh, good stuff you know nutritional food um long lasting stuff and we get the we we then um stop at another point somewhere in Ukraine i can't it disclose where and we unload this stuff into smaller vehicles so we had two coaches six mini buses two cars and then we went all the way through in the convoy to Kiev and then of course coming back we were able to fill up those vehicles with any refugees wanting to go to another part a safer part of maybe west ukraine or to the borders you're in a war zone tony what i mean you must have come across sirens and missile fire and heard it all what what's that like well, it's horrible i mean we arrived at one place so i'm i'm not sure i'm going to be able to pronounce what this place is called but i think it's translated as as windy hills in northwest Ukraine uh sorry northwest Kiev sorry um so that this is a, an impoverished part a suburb of of Kiev and uh when we first arrived we arrived at um Philadelphia Christian Church where anybody and everybody are just turning up at the church hoping for a bit of food and to get some help to be evacuated then the pastor he he asked me you know please can we take some of this food to this church i i said well please wherever um you know where you know the need so let's go there so with the next morning after uh, after the cur- the curfew um so 7 a.m. we we let set off in three mini buses and a car uh, two cars and we got to the small uh, church i mean what was shocking was first of all it was like a ghost town i've been to kiev in years gone by and it's you know busier than london um but this was completely empty no damage to any buildings um in that area but then when we got to this particular um uh, uh suburb um well you saw this queue of people um elderly people mothers uh, just hoping for a few potatoes to feed their family um and so we were unloading the stuff it was perfect timing and then you know we were talking to the pastor of the church and and then um you know the bombs were going off um they were shaking the building there was glass shaking the only thing that wasn't shaking was these pe- people they're so resilient um and uh, and then there was another explosion that was very close it was about 8 900 meters from us and um my goodness that it was a bit of a turmoil and were um, you shaking we, tony we, were you shaking when that happened yeah i was shaking um but uh, you know it was a case of like you know let's help people because you know we're talking about people that don't even even have foods let alone medical supplies to tend to any wounds so we ran together to to this the, the bomb site just up up just a stone's throw away and um you know um these people they're just they are completely uh, war torn damaged people and you know um I was also worried because they're walking all over this bomb site where this big crater was. I I I don't know what it was. It must have been a missile. Could have been all the way from Russia because it's not far away from that point. Um and all the the facial of the of the buildings were damaged um and the the the, the shock wave to the entire a- area neighborhood. Um and these are civilians. I didn't see a soldier in sight. Purely civilians um just being attacked and I don't understand why. And so we need to do more as much as we can to help people it's horrible you know um it, it, what, and, what and we're not going to stop what compels you tony as as an individual to 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 run into this danger and put your life at risk we hear of innocent people dying in the ukraine every day there's a picture of a ukrainian journalist 
um, that's been killed. What what compelled you to risk your life to do this? Well, you know, um, I'm a committed Christian, and for me, my faith uh, underpins everything. My faith in God, my faith in Jesus Christ, and and uh, that's what we do before this crisis was happening. Um, and so, really, really, that has been a great help for me. That motivates me, and uh, it, it's what I guess prompts me and stirs me to help other people who, whose life is in jeopardy. And this is the least we can do. It's really a small thing, and you know, uh, I, I mean, I feel I felt so ashamed coming having to come back for a few days just to be able to coordinate some things that I could not coordinate over there and you know just looking at people just um in you know just uh, you know living uh, their life and not caring while there are people over there being um, hurt and it's terrible and I, I guess it just really mo- mo- moves me but not just me it's the the entire team over there I'm we are collaborating with such a large number of churches and organizations I need to mention there was like fight for freedom um, headed up by George Ignatz, who's, um, who was uh, an ex-wrestler. Um, again, his life was a bit of a mess, but again, he came to faith in Christ. And, and now he's working with homeless people, working with, with ex-offenders, but now he's working with um, refugees. And that we've got refugee centers s- stationed in different places, trying to accommodate people, meet their needs. But one of the challenging things is trying to um, navigate how to come alongside people who are so traumatized and people that have traveled. There was one lady called Sasha who I spoke to one day in the, in the tent at the, um, at the border or Sedet's border. And she traveled by car, train, by foot. And she was just wearing the trauma all over her, her face. Um, she was there completely shell shocked. I, I wanted to go off and cry my heart out, but I needed to be strong. If this lady has been so strong and, and uh, you know, it's just great to be able to give people something to drink, something to eat, to ask them, where do you, where are you going to go now? What are you going to do? Um, can we help you get to your destination? Some people want to go to Sweden, Italy, uh, different places where they may know somebody. A lot of people don't know anybody. And so if they don't have anywhere to stay, we, we have a registration pro program where we try to put them in shelters. And, you know, to be able to pray with people, people need hope at this time. And uh, that's what motivates me, to be honest with you, is my, my faith. And you mentioned, Tony, you're ashamed to come back, which indicates that you're going to go back. Will you keep, do you want to spend as much time as you can there? <laughs> helping as you as possible in in the coming in the coming weeks we are trying to adapt to an ever-changing situation so for example um well uh, uh, you know uh, a few weeks back no no sorry about 20 days back you had 30 hour queues of people in cars for miles and people in standing in queues trying to get through the borders of these five nations coming uh, coming out of ukraine um, and um, and then it went to eight hour queues. Now the queues are smaller. They're half hour queues um, or to an hour. And well, the, the problem that's happening now is the, the, the fact that so many Ukrainians, they, they are displaced within Ukraine in areas that are, have less danger because, uh, you know, many people are asking the question, why don't they leave? Why don't they? But I think people don't understand that there's some very elderly people that they've lived there all their life and they got no intention of leaving. They'll gladly be bombed there. And, and there's other people, they're trapped. They, you know, they're damned if they do, they're damned if they don't. So we're trying to find these pockets of people and see, can we get you out of here? Mm-hmm. Uh, and so on. And so I'm flying back actually tomorrow. Um, and um, I, as soon as I arrive, right now, as I said, we've got a team from Seattle. They are, they are such an inspiring team. They're in um, uh, what's called Metro. It's uh, like a Costco in Romania. And they're trying to fill up a 20-ton lorry. Um, funds have been raised um, by different groups and organizations and, and uh, the Great Commission Society. And, and we're, we're just trying to fill up with proper stuff. Um, and um, basically, as I will land, and I, I think they're going to take me to the warehouse, and then a few hours later, we're going to get in the lorry and start the journey through Ukraine. Um, we will have to stop overnight partway through. We're just trying to determine at the moment whether we're able to get to um, um, uh, uh, Mariupol, Mariupol. Um, but it's very dangerous there. And so it, we're just we got a network of people on the ground that are trying to find the safe humanitarian corridors 
Um, should that be a problem, then we might redivert to Mykolaiv or to um, Kiev. Um, we've already had, uh, we've already been, I was in Kiev, as I say, last week, where that, that, miss, that bomb missile went off. And we've had groups going to Kharkiv, thanks to Fight for Freedom, that have been bringing all this stuff together. And our, our rock solid mission from the United States, who are Ukrainians. And uh, again, these are Christian organizations doing whatever they can just to um, help and support people, you know. So I'll be flying out there tomorrow, um, jumping on this lorry. It'll be a really long journey. Um, I expect we'll be staying there overnight and then we'll get to, to the point in Kiev. And depending on the, uh, the what mm. do you call it, curfew, uh, we might need to then the next morning take further supplies into around Kiev. Tony, you've been an inspiration to talk to. Um, please, please take care. Thank you. Thank you so much. All the best. Uh, that is Tony Anthony from Lee uh, running into the face of adversity to just do what he can to help in the Ukraine and heading back out there tomorrow uh, to do more of the same as part of his charity, the Great Commission Society. Uh, Boris Johnson is at a NATO meeting today, talk of more sanctions being imposed on Russia, but is it enough? You know my number if you want to react to what you've just heard there from Tony, 0800 111 4041 is the free phone number to call. Mm-hmm.